Hooves struck ancient cobblestone in a haphazard staccato as the six Yaren led the funeral procession down the solitary road, their elk-like bodies rippling with muscles beneath mottled blue hides splattered with flecks of orange and red, metal crests, one for each of the various lodges and hunts hung from their antlers, swaying side to side, clinking against one another. The beast's heavy, panted breaths filled the silence that had fallen over the Yagrin who were lined up on the side of the road, each having come to pay respect to their late lord. The procession had been heralded by an autumn heat, the last vestiges of summer. It waned as the sun burned upon the edges of the horizon with oranges and pale yellows, the fading light dancing and merging with the night in the never-ending cycle of the universe. Many of the hunters that now stood around Antar had spoken of the alignment of Erdon's three moons. The auspiciousness of the celestial event, coinciding with the funeral of Apex Raelia, was seen as a testament to the Lord Hunter's favor with the Old Hunter. To Antar, the moons only served to outline the squat, pyramidal form of the ziggurat that sat at the road's terminus. The blackened surface of the tracker's moon magnified the dirty orange slabs that made up the ziggurat's surface. The large moon's lesser sibling, the hunter's moon, was a thick crescent of silver that peeked out from above. The hunter's moon, in turn, was adorned with the bloody crown of the slayer's moon. Dropping his gaze, Antar waited as the hover barge drifted ever closer, the soft whirring of its repulsors growing ever louder. Soon they'd be kicking up leaves and bits of loose gravel. Antar had already seen the barge earlier that week. He'd inspected the craftsmanship of the dark wood that had been polished until it was as smooth as glass. Its dark burgundy surface had seemed to soak up the artificial light, drawing its brilliance into the thick bands that striped its body, while its enameled railing glinted. The metal was curved and had a flowing nature to it. Embossed within its surface were ornate depictions of past hunts, the Order's former glories. They were meant to inspire, but they did little to improve Antar's sour, sorrowful mood. Now standing there, on the side of the road, along with his fellow Yagrim, his guts tightened into a knot that he was certain would never come undone. There were many around him who remained impassive, having witnessed this procession several times before, yet he watched it through red-streaked eyes as the barge approached. Today the Order was mourning the loss of an apex, but to Anton, the man now placed within the barge was so much more. Mentor, friend, confidant, pack leader. None of these seemed adequate to define everything that the older man had been to him. Instead, they seemed only reductive. Anton watched as the hover barge's bow approached. The front of the ship was fashioned into the horrid visage of the chalice beast its boar-like face flanked by two long, jutting tusks the size of great swords, its eyes leering at those before it with a dark hunger. Strange how such a monster, one that had nearly destroyed the Order in its youth, was now paraded like a guardian to the dead. What was more unnerving to Antar was the way its snout was splayed open, as if the creature was ready to take up its old ways at any moment. As it approached, he could see the line of fangs that ran up its snout and then curved down its throat, an aberration if he'd ever seen one. There were some who believed that this was the original skull and vessel that had bore Cadia centuries prior. As the barge passed, Antar's eyes were drawn up to the lanterns that hung from posts placed upon the barge's deck. There were nine in total, no more, no less. This was the decree of the Lord Hunter himself. All save for one burned with a smoldering intensity. 
The emotions he'd struggled to carry broke free upon seeing the blackened emptiness of the lantern that now represented Apex Raelia. Antar's knees trembled, a contrast from the hunters directly around him who remained stoic. He clenched his stinging eyes shut. Deep, racking breath surged in and out of him like a tide before a storm. A hand clasped his shoulder. He lifted his face to see a blue-skinned Minoan woman whom he'd never seen before. She gave his shoulder a firm squeeze. Their eyes met, and she made a short, firm nod. He took a deep breath, appreciating the support. While he might not know the other Jaegren around him, they were all bound together, one in the blood, as the old song whispered in his mind. The barge drifted by, winding down the road before slipping into the shadows of the ziggurat. Pack by pack, the Jaegren left until Antar was the only one remaining. Yet he lingered, having decided to wallow in his sorrow for the moment. Above, the stars appeared as the world was adorned in regal shadows. The stars' faded light shimmered in listless isolation in the murky astral sea above. He remembered all the times he'd ventured through that celestial ocean with Raelia, the man who'd found him and had chosen to take him under his tutelage and transform him from a vagabond into a purpose-driven monster hunter. Thudding mechanical footsteps disturbed the silence. The soft hydraulic whisper told Antar who'd come to fetch him. It was Sage Loken. Antar grunted. No doubt the old veteran had come to chastise him. He'd say something to the effect that all things die and there was much killing left to be done, or some other wisdom that Antar wasn't really in the mood to hear. The steps stopped several paces behind him. Sage Loken, Antar said in a respectful but clipped tone. You're late, came the synthetic reply. Antar's hands clenched, yet he held his anger in check. He knew he was overly emotional right now, and any choices he'd likely to make were best left not acted upon. The old veteran, who'd been dead longer than Anton had been alive, was set in his ways. Taking his spirit and transforming him into an acrenum had only further solidified him. He was a rut in the universe that refused to be filled in. I was preoccupied. Clump, clump, clump. Sage Loken lumbered up next to Antar, leaving him cast in shadows. Antar eyed the sage as his head rose, making clicking noises as it did. The old veteran gazed up into the night sky above, his head swiveling in a slow, ponderous arc as he appreciated the heavens. Antar wondered if the old master knew where in the sky to look to see the world where he'd left his body. That particular idea sent a shiver up Antar's spine, while also causing his brows to crease. Why didn't they do that when an apex died? Creating an Akrena was the Dominion's way of either forcing the unfaithful to repent to the Imperial Goddess for wasting their lives, or to keep the valued servants around so that their wisdom and knowledge wouldn't be lost within the Talons of Death. Do you know the last thing Apex Raelia asked of me? Antar's chin tilted up as curiosity bubbled up within him. It grew, coming to dominate the sorrow and grief that had clung to him. It was a potent shelter against the storm he'd endured these last several days. He gave me orders to have you prepared for the shadow taming. Antar's heart skipped a beat. He blinked several times, his mind trying to process what he'd just heard. He shook his head, a slight tremble that turned into an enthusiastic refusal to believe the sage's words. Antar was too young, only in his mid-fifties. He still had a ways to go before he became venerable. Most Jaegren would never be considered for such an honor. Those that were deemed worthy had been at least in their seventies, as well as boasting forty years of service. He wasn't a green hunter by any means, 
having slicked his blade's thirst upon the throats of many monsters. But he wasn't a master, nor did he have any right to claim to be. What did he know of the wider Imperial territory beyond his home region of Nailur? He predicted you'd have the same response. I believe that's why he chose you. <laughs> his faith in me is appreciated, Antar said, knowing that the now late Apex's opinion held little compared to their god's own. Sage Loken let out a mechanical chuckle. The sound was as low and grating as it was synthetic. Little of the original man remained, save for his intense and unrelenting spirit. The sage lifted his leg, his hip joint reorienting him so that he was now facing Antar. You've been confirmed. The world froze for a small eternity as those words echoed within Antar's soul. Confirmed? By the Lord Hunter himself? He snapped his head up towards Loken's flat, featureless face. The old veteran sat there, unmoving. He's serious. That thought caused Antar to straighten. If he was good enough for the Lord Hunter and Apex Raelia, then he only had one thing he could do. Accept and prove their judgment right. How long do I have? Sage Loken took several steps, turning his considerable mass towards the ziggurat. Antar stepped up next to him, peering into the sky as Loken pointed up to the three moons. You have until their light runs out. Upon the zenith of their darkness, you will enter the ziggurat of the celestial hunt and attempt the shadow taming. Antar nodded, noting the word attempt. The shadow taming was one of the most dangerous rites within the Shikari Order. Unlike the other rites that purged those too weak to become a Yagrin, the Shadow Taming purged those Yagrin who weren't enough to earn the respect of an Elder Beast. The Labyrinthian corridors were no doubt littered with the broken remains of those who'd failed to live up to the Lord Hunter's standards. Should he pass, he would join the ranks of the Beast Barons, guided and advised by his own Elder Beast. Train me. Without another word, Sage Loken walked away, and Antar followed. The cold air of the ziggurat's interior seeped into Antar's exposed skin. Goosebumps broke out across his flesh as he padded down the stone corridor. Everything was pitch black, smothered and coated in shadows so deep that even his enhancements couldn't pierce their veil. Instead, he was forced to rely upon his other senses. His foot shifted across the stone, stopping when he touched the jagged edge of something. Kneeling down, he grabbed the hard edge and quietly ascertained that it was another broken rib cage. Thus far, that had been all he'd run into. Skulls, broken leg bones, or fractured remnants of rib cages and spines. Ruinous reminders of the fate that would befall him should he fail. As he made his way deeper into the rough, stoned labyrinth, he cursed the loud echoes of his breathing. But trying to repress this breathing would only exacerbate the issue. All he could do was keep an open ear, waiting for the moment when the Elder Beasts decided to attack. They were nearby. He knew it from the musky stench. His foot slid across two rough scars that had been gouged into the floor. No doubt an angered Elder Beast had inflicted them. He felt around working on confirming a suspicion. After feeling the surrounding walls, he concluded the Yagrin that had died here had been attacked from above. The Elder Beast had unseen vantage points from which to judge his progress. It made sense. That meant there was likely one or more watching him right now, judging whether he was worthy to continue forward. He straightened his spine. There was nothing he could do about it. Once more, he pushed further and further into the ziggurat, hoping that he'd reach the inner chamber before any of his stalkers became dissatisfied with him. For the next several hours, he made his way deeper into the darkness, stopping only when he came to a crossroads. Sage Loken had insisted he memorize the layout of the ziggurat, something he'd taken to with enthusiasm. Along with the sensory deprivation training, he might 
just have a fighting chance. So too did all the others. He thought as his hand brushed against the skull that had been nailed to the wall. He knew the elder beasts were smart, but he hadn't ever really interacted with one. What he actually knew of them were the rumors. How insightful and knowledgeable they were. They were the advisors and guides to all beast barons and apexes alike. One could hold neither of those positions without having earned the respect of an elder beast. It was said that the elder beasts were divine creations by the Lord Hunter's own hand, the first children of his blood. Antar stopped at another intersection. His hand brushed against the stone as he searched for the various markers etched into the walls. He paused, tilting his head. There was a faint scraping sound. He stiffened as he realized the sound was nearby. The silence that surrounded him was deafening. The scraping sound grew louder as the creature must have realized he knew it was there. A low growl rumbled through the hall off to his left. He stepped back, pressing himself against the wall. Through the taut muscles in his back, he felt the emblem he'd been searching for. He clenched his eyes shut as his face screwed up in frustration. He was supposed to go down the hall the Elder Beast was now lurking in. This wouldn't be so hard if they'd just let me take my weapons. He grumbled to himself, knowing that that was the point. Any Yagrin worth their blood could fight a creature if they were prepared. That's why only the exceptional could join the ranks of the Beast Barons. Antar listened. The creature was rubbing up against the wall. Should he go around another way and try to double back? He immediately struck that idea down. That was a good way to get himself lost. The labyrinth was large enough that he could travel for days without retracing his steps. Should he wait? A low rumble filled the space between them. Antar clenched his fists. He'd have to press forward. It was the only path worthy of a Yagrin. Taking a deep breath, he settled his mind. He'd heard rumors that elder beasts could sense emotions. He shoved the thoughts away. They did nothing but hinder him at this point. Taking a step forward, he steeled himself. The elder beast growled, a low, deep rumble that now filled the halls. Its hot breath reeked of rot and fetid flesh. Antar passed into its stench as he continued forward. Bile rose in his throat as tears stung the edges of his eyes. This was beyond anything he'd ever smelled before. He'd endured the stench of gutted monsters whose remains he'd spilled out, or the decayed remnants of people he'd been too late to save, but none of that compared to the pungent reek he was now enduring. With each step came a knowing that it could very well be his last. Now the rumble intensified. No longer a low threat, but a raw, furious wail. <laughs> The word was distorted, ripped out from an alien throat. Yet the message was clear. Antar hesitated. Should he respect the wishes of the sacred beast, or was this a test? Antar shook his head. Raelia, what have you gotten me into? There were no clear instructions on what to do. All Sage Loken had told him was to follow his gut. Clenching his teeth, he took another step forward. Jaws snapped like an iron trap. Antar lowered his head, determined to make it through. Die. Antar could feel the Elder Beast's long, shaggy hair brushing against him. The creature's body nearly filled the passage. He pressed himself against the wall as he continued forward. Before long, he passed the creature's considerable bulk. Its thick tail slapped against the wall before him. This time, he didn't stop, but merely slowed until he was sure he knew the rhythm of its swings. He passed without incident. He continued down the corridor, pausing only every ten steps or so to ensure that the thing wasn't following. He realized now that the encounter had been a test. <sighs> Hopefully I passed. Yet he wasn't willing to let his guard down. The situation had confirmed that the Elder Beasts were, in fact, watching him and actively testing him. Antar's muscles were sore. Sleeping against the cold stones while only catching interspersing snippets of sleep had left his body drained. He realized now that the Elder Beasts had likely planned this, wearing him down until each and every nerve was frayed. Then, when he was at his weakest, they'd get the drop on him. Now, as he traversed the passageway, he used his hand to lean against the wall, no longer simply using them as a guide, but more and more as support. Was it like this for all recruits? 
Part of him hoped that he'd made it farther than most, though a coiling doubt within the pit of his stomach told him that there was another, just as likely truth. The elder beasts were ushering him along, guiding him, as they did all the others, into the central chamber. It could be there that the elder beasts determined whether a candidate was worthy of being their master or their meal. It was there in the deepest parts of the ziggurat that they were furthest from the safety of the outside world. Images of being chased down the pitch black halls flashed through his mind. The idea of being pursued without knowing where he was going filled him with an icy dread. He struggled against the doubt's poison. On an imperial scale, Yegrin were in short supply. There were many worlds out there, and most rarely saw Yegrin. The order was already spread thin, and so needed its ranks filled. Yet always the enigmatic commands of the Lord Hunter prevailed. This whole ritual was designed around the commandment of keeping the Nine. That meant there had to be plenty of beast barons to step into their place. Dozens of candidates filled the same path forward, yet how many came out? That was the question gnawing at his courage. He cast the thoughts aside, hating the feeling that he was standing upon shifting sands. <laughs> Yeah, sands that contain vipers. Shaking the thoughts away, he enjoyed the warmth that crept into his muscles from the movement. His fingertips slid into a small groove in the wall. Following its curved edges, he found it to be a circle. His brow creased as he concentrated, pressing his aching fingers until he could get a good sense of the detail. Tracing the circle again, he found it. The beginning and the end. It was an Ouroboros. He could just make out the head that was swallowing the tail, the only distortion to the otherwise circular emblem. He paused for a moment, thinking back to the day of Raelia's funeral, when he'd lingered there on the road. Back then, standing on the side of the road, he'd been lost, not knowing how to press forward, how to go on without Raelia's wisdom and insight. What sort of universe took that away? How could he expect to go on without such a mentor? Worst still, he was approaching the point where he'd start to be seen as one himself. How could a blind and deaf man lead others? Yet now he understood. Raelia hadn't left him, at least not alone. Being a wise man, he'd anticipated Antar's need. Sage Loken had said as much. Raelia had come to his aid, had laid out the path, and as always, it hadn't been easy and it could very well get him killed. But, if he could survive, he'd have learned something that would make the next journey easier. If he could enter the next chamber and convince one of the Elder Beasts that he was worthy, then he would have succeeded in living up to his old pack leader's expectations. Ready or not, Antar strode forward, his hand only brushing the wall as he turned the corner. After a dozen paces, the wall sloped off, curving away. He dropped his hand. This was the central chamber. He waited in silence, patient as any hunter should be. Then, all at once, light erupted, searing flashes of brilliance that stung his light-starved retinas. He clenched his eyelids shut and tilted his head to the side. That was the only movement he would allow himself. Slowly, he forced himself to turn towards the light, allowing its brilliance to pierce his eyelids. Then he cracked his eyes open, widening them bit by bit until he could handle the light. The, circle. the voice was low and rumbled through the room. It vibrated through Antar's chest and bones, yet he didn't flinch. He'd come this far, and he wasn't about to give in to the fear that coiled in his stomach. Instead, he stepped forward, entering into a ring of torches. The flames erupted, growing higher. Their amber light stained the surrounding room. He gasped as he saw the room in its fullness. Elder beasts surrounded him. Dozens upon dozens of eyes glinted in the firelight, each seeming to stare down at him, their bony faces contrasting against dark, shaggy fur. Each beast sat upon a tall slab of black marble. These makeshift thrones jutted up at varying heights. The elder beasts ringed the entire room, those in front closest to him were lower while each consecutive row beyond was higher. Movement caught his attention, and he saw several of the sacred beasts skulking just beyond the firelight, bodies half-concealed by the dancing shadows. 
They circled him like a pack who trapped their prey. His heart slammed against his chest. The hairs on the back of his neck rose. Indeed, he was trapped. There was no way out. He'd reached the end of the road. The scraping sound off to his left caught his attention. The elder beast that sat upon the throne leaned forward, its claws digging into the stone. Tusks jutted out from its blunted face. Antar narrowed his eyes, trying to see past the flames. For a moment, the image of the chalice beast flashed across his mind as he gazed up at the enormous beast enthroned before him. Its tusks were something that the other visible elder beasts didn't seem to have. Yet unlike the chalice beast, this creature was decidedly more draconic, though with a shaggy gray coat of fur. He could see scars that riddled its exposed skin in haphazard patterns, no doubt a sign of those who'd thrown themselves against the beast and had found it unyielding. It tilted its head so that it was now sideways. An icy cold shot through Antar's stomach as he saw the elder beast's leathery lips running down into its throat, just like the chalice beast. His heart pounded in his chest as it locked a solitary eye upon him. There was an ancientness within those pools of molten gold. Antar didn't know how he knew this, but only that whatever this elder beast was before him, it made Sage Loken seem young. State your name. The words were still strange and gnashing, yet there was a higher pitch to it. Antar knew all at once that this was one of the females. Yagrin Antar. His answer echoed out amongst the host of beasts. Those circling him growled as they continued just beyond the fire. From where do you hail? Skipiar. There was a low rumble as the elder beasts discussed this amongst themselves. The female slammed her tail against the stone and silence fell. Antar eyed the jagged bone-like protrusions that ran along that tail. This elder beast was like nothing he'd ever seen before. Who has summoned you? Antar blinked. Under whose authority did he proclaim himself? Seeing that the host before him were the divine beasts of the Lord Hunter, the safe and righteous answer was, The Lord Hunter! The lead elder beast snapped its jaws, its clashing sounding like distant thunder. The motion was so swift, so powerful that Antar knew it could easily crush him. Even with his enhancements, his body was frail compared to the power of these creatures. We are all bound by the will of our lord. Under whose summons have you come? Antar hesitated. Before he could open his mouth, another voice rose from higher up in the chamber. I have summoned him. The voice was deep and rich and had a far more normal quality to it than any of the others. This elder beast had been seated beyond Antar's ability to see, but a moment later he saw it crawling between the thrones, claws scraping as it wove its way towards him. There was a general uproar as the room was filled with hisses, roars, growls, and gnashing jaws. The two elder beasts that had been circling Antar stopped on either side of him, allowing room for the newcomer as it entered the circle. You have not fulfilled your time. A nearby elder beast hissed at the newcomer. The elder beast that had apparently called Antar was much smaller than the others. Bony protrusions ran from spine to tail, their pale coloring contrasting with its otherwise black fur. It craned its long neck up towards the elder beast who had spoken to it. The speaker was now halfway down its perch, its claws digging into the rock as it leered down at the elder beast who'd summoned Antar. You are small, weak, and need sustenance. The newcomer grunted. Are you questioning the words of the Lord Hunter? The accuser, along with the other elder beasts, snapped their jaws, mimicking the leader, though the effect was decidedly unlike hers. No, only the messenger. If you find me unfit, then test your fangs and claws and see if I relent. Enough! The leader roared, her claws slamming down upon her throne, their tips puncturing into the stone. Antar's blood ran cold. What was going on? 
How had he found himself in this predicament, caught up in some unknown rivalry between elder beasts? It was a position he didn't want to be in, least of all without his armor and weapons. The female swung her head down towards the one who had summoned him. Her eye was upon him now. The smaller elder beast didn't flinch, but held her gaze. A potent silence filled the room. Nobody moved. The air was electric, and for a moment Antar thought the two would fight. Then, all at once, the spell was broken as the female lifted her head and roared, Let the final ritual begin. The ground rumbled and the flames were pulled away until they were pressed up against the wall. The two elder beasts that had been circling him slunk away, disappearing in the darkness between the thrones. Antar turned to the elder beast that had apparently summoned him and saw the beast crouched low. Let us see what your master has taught you. The beast roared as it lunged forward. Antar dove to the side, rolling out of the way. The terrible sound of the beast's claws raking the ground echoed behind him. He jumped up, landed, spun, ducked as the tail swiped the air. His eyes darted across the room, searching for a weapon. His search was interrupted by a roar. Large open jaws filled the air before him. His vision was filled with fangs. He cursed as he threw his hands out and grabbed the snout and lower jaw. Heat, a searing heat. It filled his hands as blood welled up from where the fangs had punctured through. He gritted his teeth through the pain. He couldn't stop, wouldn't stop. He had to prove Raylia right, had to honor the Lord Hunter. His muscles strained as the elder beast worked to close its jaws. Days of fatigue burned like foul pollutants within his muscles. How much more could he endure? The elder beast's body curled up, preparing to rush forward. He shifted his weight to the side as he brought his hands down at an angle. A pained shout was torn from his throat as his hands ripped free from their piercing shackles. The beast shot past. Antar backed away, keeping his eyes on the creature. A quick glance at his hands told him that the blessings placed upon him were already working to knit the chunks of flesh back together. All around him, the elder beasts shouted, roars and words mixed into a deafening, incoherent rumble that caused Antar to wince. He stepped back, but found his foot hitting the wall before he could steady himself. Instead, he chose to sidle along the arch, looking to put as much distance between the elder beast and himself. The elder beast came at him again throwing its jaws, swinging its claws, slashing with its tail over and over again. Antar struggled to keep the distance between them. The elder beast was wearing him down, yet he forced himself to continue dodging and rolling to the side, a blur slightly faster than his attacker. Then it happened. His muscles ached and refused to budge, causing the tail to slam into him. He shot across the small arena and collided into the wall with a crack. As Antar slumped to the ground, his thoughts trudged through his murky, swampy mind. How could any Yagrin endure this? Even with all their enhancements, blessings, and augmentations, no Yagrin could endure such punishment. There could only be death. Antar spat. A thick glob of speckled darkness stained the floor. Every breath ached and his chest was constricted. He gasped as a rib popped out, snapping back into place. It was a sensation he'd endured before, yet never had he endured it under the crushing weight of such fatigue. Those days without sleep smothered him, blowing out the inferno of his strength as though it were a candle's flame. Yet, he knew it was all by design, and so he made the only choice a Yagrin could make. He pushed himself up, bloodied, broken, one arm hanging limp at his side, the other burned with every twitch and spasm. He'd heal, eventually, but there wasn't time for that. His fight, his survival, his destiny was here and now. Staggering forward, he planted his foot and roared at the elder beast before him. The black shadow of its body hurtling towards him was the last thing he saw. Sage Loken stood gazing down at the road below. It was a blackened smudge 
upon the otherwise pristine wilderness that surrounded the ziggurat. The spirit within the machine, Loken himself, sighed, but the sound came out as an electronic hiss he didn't recognize. His sensors told him a breeze was pressing against him, but he couldn't feel it. In these quiet moments, he wondered if his younger self would recognize the Yagrin he'd become if he hadn't been killed out on Urjabu. Damned Raskalor, he thought as he shifted from side to side. It was a habit of his humanity, something the software and circuitry that cradled his soul couldn't get rid of. Somewhere deep down, he knew that becoming a Yangren demanded a sacrifice, not the kind that all the other inquisitionary or military forces spouted on about. No, being a Yangren was a demand to sacrifice one's humanity. That was the first law of the hunt, after all. Those who hunt monsters must see to it that they become one themselves. As a sage, he understood the truth of those words spoken by the Lord Hunter. This universe was dark and demanding in its brutality. Only one who could gaze into the uncaring abyss and not flinch would endure. The sound of stone scraping pulled him from his thoughts. He turned his body to the entrance. He stood in the silence, waiting for the answer to Antar's fate. Either the hunter would stride out next to an elder beast, or the elder beast would cast his heart out upon the stone. He'd always found this part of the ritual to be the strangest part of all. Why would such beasts care so much about letting them know if a hunter failed? As he gazed into the shadows, he continued to question this. Why were the elder beasts the way they were? Their appearance were like those things that the Order hunted, but at the same time they acted as the highest advisors to the most lofty of positions. They slayed those unworthy to tame them, yet in doing so they ensured that the Order's leadership stayed strong and always bent a knee to their Lord Hunter's designs. It was a conflicting image that was concealing a deeper truth, one that Sage Loken had yet to puzzle out. Loken's sensors picked up the scratching of claws. His answer was coming. His internal system clicked out a steady rhythm, a pale replacement for the faithful thumping of his lost heart. The skull-like face of the Elder Beast emerged from the darkness as it lumbered forward. Its neck lowered towards the ground as though it were tracking something. Loken sighed. Another one lost. Logan was about to bemoan the waste, as Antar could have become an Akrina like himself. But a second later, Antar emerged. The man was somewhat thinner, his muscles having lost much of the definition the enhancements gave. Antar grinned at him. You passed. He did. The Elder Beast said with a hint of pride. Sage Logan focused on the Elder Beast. He'd never seen one that looked so... Young? Was that what he was seeing? A younger elder beast? Those words, jumbled together, were preposterous. Turning back to Antar, he saw dozens of new scars littering the younger man's body. According to his system's internal calculations, there was no way his enhanced healing factor, let alone the divine blessing, should have been able to repair all that. Once more, Sage Loken wondered what was truly going on within the ziggurat of the celestial hunt. He siphoned the processing power away from such idle curiosities as he stepped forward. Let me be the first to congratulate you, Beast Baron Antar. Thank you for listening to The Shadow Tank. This story takes place within the Legends of the Fall shared universe. It's a universe packed with sci-fi and fantasy elements that emerge together to create something unique and complex. If you enjoyed the story, then check out the other stories I've produced. The universe currently has three novels, two short stories, with more stories still to come. Links are in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about the world building and lore that concerns the story, then check out the links to the relevant articles in the description below. If you enjoyed the story, then please leave a comment down below, as well as a like and a share. That small act of kindness on your part is tremendous in its efforts to help grow and support this channel, these stories, and myself. I look forward to sharing more stories with you in the coming future. I have been your archivist, and I hope that you have a great day.